Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting, fun-filled, expeditious episode of Radio Rama, where as the name implies, I show you how to work on radios. And today we have a 1946 Bendix Model 656A radio and record player. And um, this guy was dropped off at the museum a couple of weeks ago. It actually still works fine. And those of you not familiar with Bendix, they're, they were actually a, a company that made aviation equipment. They uh, were famous, I believe, for making fuel injection and I can't remember exactly what the, it, it, was, it was. It was either avionics or mechanics or both. I should have looked up the company history, but they were around for a very long, they might even still be around, I don't know. I think they actually make brake pads or brake shoes or something like that now. But anyway, um, this is going to be an interesting project because, like I said, it actually still kind of works. Even the record player still works. Someone has replaced what was probably originally a salt crystal cartridge with a, a magnetic cartridge. So it's not putting out as many volts as the original, which would have probably, according to one of our record player guys, probably about three volts. This one's probably putting out about one volt, so it's not as loud, but you know, it's a 78 record player. At this point, not many people listen to 78s, so it's just a novelty. And if you do listen to 78s, you probably wouldn't want to play them on this thing because that would ruin them. It, uh, it's just playing Jane AM. Looks like it has a bunch of different tone controls here. The finish is in good condition. There's a little bit of wear up here. It's not bad. That's probably from sitting in the sun. So first thing I'm going to do is, is take everything apart. I think what I'm going to do is start on the cabinet first. I've been uh, spending the last week solid working on this bad boy. I just got it back together again. So I'm just kind of, I don't know, need to take a break from just sheerly working on electronics and Eh, treat myself. I'll work on something easy. The cabinet. Now, this one does have some concerns. And I'm going to show you. has a concerning thing. I'm going to show you when I turn it around. Alright, so probably some of you who know about these radios have already spotted the concern. And the concern is that the whole chassis is sitting on a nice sheet of asbestos. Now, everyone needs to go look up what asbestos is. If you don't know what it is, it's a pretty dangerous substance. Uh, stuff got used for everything. Excellent heat fireproofing capabilities and uh, but it's also really bad for your health. Uh, you should not be inhaling this and uh, some people have a almost I don't know it's like a lot of other things it should be treated with respect the the number one thing is you just don't want to really get the stuff airborne other than this little corner here it's it's relatively intact what i tend to do and everyone needs to make up their own minds about how they're going to handle it this is just what i do is i am um, carefully remove the chassis i do have a respirator that is rated for asbestos and i wear that and then I either gently mist or wet the sheet and then I transfer it into a sealed plastic bag and then every few years I go to the toxic waste facility and hand it off there. You're not supposed to throw the stuff away especially not in the municipal garbage because once it gets out there and starts getting crumpled up and everything then you know it goes airborne. It's not good for anybody so just just be aware of that it used to really freak me out. Not so much anymore. I just I just learned how to treat the stuff respectfully and know what I'm getting myself into. So it looks like there's there's a rather large speaker in the front here. I'm assuming it's probably not. It's probably not attached to the chassis. It's probably bolted. Yeah, it's bolted to the front of the cabinet. So there's probably a big long plug. There's also a plug for the record player. <clears throat> And there's an antenna back here too, but I can't tell. Okay, the antenna is also attached to the cabinet. So this is gonna be interesting getting out. I 
I think it looks like you can remove the chassis from inside of here. Yeah, there's two screws there, and I'm not sure if there's a third. A third one might be underneath. Because that does go... Let's pull this out. Where's the third? Yep, yeah, there it is. The third screw is right there. So, I think I'll probably remove the bottom one. And then the two up top here. And, um, again, you should just be you know, careful and respectful about the asbestos. Okay, now that I've got the uh, chassis pulled out and I've got some plastic bags to put the asbestos in, I'm going to put my sprayer on mist. And all I'm doing is, well, it's actually it's more than mist, but I'm just getting it wet. And the idea is that when I Loosen the bolts underneath. This should just lift right off the asbestos and it won't make any dust and I can fold this stuff up and put it in a plastic bag. Okay, so it lifted off pretty uh, easily. Again, no dust. Just gonna lightly get it wet and see how easily is it gonna come off. Oh, easy. So, fold it in half. Feels so weird touching something that drives so much fear into the hearts of people for right for rightful reasons. This shit's bad, but like I said, you just want to make sure you get it wet so it's not gonna make a big mess and get friable and everything. Get in the air. Just put it in the bag. Double layer it up, seal it up with tape. I keep a little container in my attic, which I keep all these little packets of asbestos. Again, once, once probably every two years, I take it to the toxic waste facility, as you should do with anything toxic like this. All right, so now it's time to work on the cabinet. I'm doing things in reverse because I like mixing things up, things up every once in a while. I use a product that's been around forever. It's called Old English. I have no clue what's in it. My mom used to use this stuff in the kid. I mean, when I was a kid growing up, because having a house full of young children, they would come and beat up the furniture. So having a product that could cover up scratches and everything came in handy. And I never forgot that. And so I use it on my radios. And uh, you can see what it's doing here. It's kind of coming in and filling in all the uneven areas, all the little watermarks and discolorations and the scrapes and scratches and abrasions and the sun UV damage and usually you know if the finish is, is even in somewhat poor condition you can make a huge improvement I prefer this because you know once you strip off that 80 year old finish even if it's not perfect that's it it will never ever in my opinion look like a from the factory period radio. Some, refinishing is an art. The people that do it really well, hats off to you. Most people, on the other hand, don't do refinishing jobs right. They will, you know, strip a lot of things off that they shouldn't. For example, this right here, this little trim bit, that is not wood. That's that is a photograph. Likewise, you've also got this um, logo here. A lot of little details like that. You, it's not easy to replicate that. And, um, and I'll, a lot of times I'll see people will refinish these guys and they'll put on a satin finish. And then when reality, a lot of these, when they came from the factory, were pretty glossy. It's just my nit. I prefer to keep the finish original if I can help it, unless it's absolutely trash and there's no salvage. Okay, well this is after applying heap and helpings of Old English. And you can see it does indeed look a lot better. Now, it's great at filling in... Um, scratches and stuff but it's not great at preserving the sheen permanently it looks shiny now but it's only because it's wet if we want to bring back some of the sheen by basically removing a lot of the abrasions and filth and grime i'm going to go after it with this buffing pad and some plain old-fashioned caranuba car wax it's just a plant-based wax kind of smells like bananas which is kind of pleasant especially if you're hungry like me and you're going to just apply it with this, makes life a lot easier. I used to do it by hand, and now this doesn't kill my hands. It's like, let the tool do the work. Work smarter, not harder. That's what 
some of my relatives used to say, it's a good thing to say. All right, let's get to it. Yeah, welcome back to day two, working on the Bendix record, record, record player radio. And it polished up pretty nicely. I'm trying to get a good angle on this in the sun, but now it is time to work on the electrical guts, which is this chassis here. It is a six tube unit, but first I'm gonna, what I also did is I cleaned up and polished the record player with that same little buffing device that I showed you. We'll need to grease and oil everything here, but I'm not gonna concern myself with that right now. I'm gonna work on the radio chassis. This can go somewhere else for now. I especially don't wanna set it on the motor mount. So we'll just do like that. Let's bring this guy over here and take a look at it. I'll detach that antenna. And from what I can see, I think someone replaced this cord. That's not the original cord. Because number one, it's polarized. Uh, and luckily, this is what I was hoping it was supposed to be this is a floating chassis meaning one end of the AC line is going through a capacitor it's this guy here you can see it's going the chassis ground and probably nothing else in here is doing that and I can see yes that is indeed the case I'm also happy to see we have plastic tube sockets meaning probably None of the grids are grounded, which seems to happen on a lot of these guys. We've got nice cloth covered wire, which means we're not going to have any shattering wire. I believe other than the cord, this is 100% original. It's possibly never been worked on before, which is pretty remarkable. Either that or it had low, low hours. Maybe it had low hours on it. I don't know. But it's in good shape. But... What we need to do is replace the electrolytic capacitors, which are inside of this can, which is mounted up top, and we have three values, a 60, a 40, and a 20 microfarad. You see there's a square and a triangle and no mark. Those same, those same shapes will be embossed on the bottom, which is going to be very difficult to film, but they're usually right next to each of the lugs, and there's a bunch of electrolytic crap that's coming out of the bottom, which is obscuring that. But you're just going to match your values with the shapes on the side of that can. So that's the first thing I'll do, and then I'll replace the, sa the cap to ground with a safety cap. And then it's just a matter of snipping all these guys out of here and replacing them with new caps, because you should not think about trusting any of these guys uh, occasionally I'll take them out and, and test them just to see what their capacitance is and they're always hilariously way off which is amazing to think that a lot of these guys actually work with those guys that severely out of whack but these are not exactly fine delicate instruments they're typical AA5 style radios meant to be affordable and reliable to the masses all right so we've got the three electrolytics replaced I know they're kind of buried in here Sometimes you just have to be real creative where you stick things. I try to stick things as close as I can to their connecting points so that stuff's not going to you know, move around. Sometimes people will put really long, wiggly leads on their stuff, and that's just asking for trouble. Plus, it can also make the radio signal, radio reception all funky-dory. You want to kind of keep your lead dresses appropriately the same as what came in the radio, especially these paper caps, anything in the IF section, you want to kind of keep those leads similar. Don't go crazy. I mean, they're not super sensitive sets, but if you start putting things all over the place, that can really mess up. It'll essentially detune the chassis. That's why a lot of times when you redo a set, you have to go up and uh, essentially tune the IF uh, cans a little bit. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and test the set. I did put the safety cap here. That is an X2, Y2 cross the line rated cap. It's rated at 0 0.01 microfarads, which is much, much less than this, which is rated at a tenth of a microfarad. 
that's enough capacitance to definitely give you a nasty little jolt if you were to touch chassis and ground so we reduced it down I'm going to test it first before I get any further it's best to make sure before you get too carried away that you check your work to make sure you didn't mess something up because it's easier to find out what you did wrong with less stuff in the way versus having shotgun the whole thing I've got my antenna hooked up here I think I might have left it on a record player let's see not easy to turn. Let's try putting this knob on here. Social media, just follow me. Three, T-I-M-M-E-R-I-E, where I've tagged south. Give me a call. I'd love to hear your... Well, speaking to you, because that's not who you are. You see, all... You. He just wants... Sounds pretty good actually. We've got really dirty controls and lots of leaky old caps still inside. In fact, you can see this end has come off here. That guy's probably gone to, probably, probably shorted. So the fact that it works as well as it does when it's still mostly old, filled with nasty old caps, is not a bad thing. Not bad at all. All right, so we have everything recapped. And now it's time to clean the controls. Clean the volume control. Don't be afraid to douse the crap out of it. And then we're going to clean the contact switch, which is here. Let's make sure she still works, because wouldn't that be nice if we put all that work into it? And it doesn't work because of wiring error, because I've certainly done that before. Actually, you need to make sure and book up the speaker. Hold on just a minute. All right, so the radio still works. Seems like the uh, tuning cord is slipping, so I need to turn it upside, right side up rather, and do some checking out on that, maybe some lubrication, cleaning. But she works and works well, so we're still doing, so we're still in good shape here. Uh, first thing I did is I removed this metal plate that was hanging down here so I can get access to all of this, because I think I might need to tighten the string up a little bit. It's kind of loose and wiggly. But first thing I'm going to do is clean all the collected gunk off of the slider up here for the indicator. What? Shoot, I just dropped the sandpaper. What you want to do is just try to get all that built up grease and gunk off of there. And they're going to put a little oil on that. I'm going to use a little three in one oil. Not three in one oil, it's a zoom spout oil. Zoom spout oil has become the equivalent of like the ketchup of oils for me. I use it on everything. <laughs> it sure works good. Yeah, that's not really that's not really moving that much. It's slipping. But we're also going to oil the tuning condenser bearings. So what you want is everything to move nice and free. I actually got a pretty impressive tuning condenser on this guy. It's quite large. So let me get a little on some of these little bearings here, these little pulleys. Just touch them up a little bit. And what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to film it, is what I do is I'll tend to grab my pair of pliers and I pull on that spring and reattach it, like stretch it out and reattach it to get some more tension. Because probably this cable has stretched over the years, so we're just going to tighten it up a little bit. Stop filming, please. Come on. All right, so I did all that, and this is all moving quite a bit more nicely. We're gonna bend that needle out just a little bit. Cause it's rubbing. There we go. Moving like butter. Such simple little mechanisms. Anyway, I'm gonna put this plate back on there after wiping it off. Actually, I think I'll leave that off because it might make it easier for me to get to some of this. I'm going to clean the chassis. A lot of people wonder why I do this. I just like doing it. I'm going to clean the tubes and the metal and all these other surfaces. Because if it's been around for 80 years, it deserves to have, you know, a bath every once in a while. All right, so what I'm going to do now is work on the record player. And that includes just oiling a bunch of stuff, including the bearing here. 
even though it seems to actually be in pretty good shape. Just gonna touch everything up with oil. I'm not sure if this um, changer does anything. It seems like up top it's missing some parts. I'm not sure how exactly it changes the records, but then again, I'm not a record changing expert kind of guy, so I don't know. Yeah, anyway, we're just going around and touching everything that moves to make sure it'll all like move nice and easily come and come to the fact that if this is a changer that it still works. We want to make sure that all the mechanisms that are involved are nicely lubricated. I love these zoom spell oilers with the ridiculous like long it's like basically a hummingbird going and filling all the little areas with oil. Anyway let me uh, see if that, oh yeah, it's turning a lot easier. But basically what I want to do is try to get all that stuff moving very freely, especially the motor, which seems to be moving quite nicely, actually. Welcome to day three of working on the, I can't remember this brand name, Bendix record radio player. And the last thing I'm going to do is add to the set's already existent audio input section, which is for the record player. Not only will the listener, I mean the owner of this future thing, let me rephrase that, it's like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. The future owner of this device will be able to not only listen to the records, 78 records, but the radio and also whatever device they choose to plug into it, meaning it could be a Bluetooth or whatever. And we're going to do that by going through the existent RCA jack here. Now, the thing is, I mentioned that someone had replaced the original cartridge on it. And so we want to compensate the um, lack of gain that the replacement cartridge has. We're going to boost that signal a little bit. And the way you do that is you can run in through... This is going to serve as an isolation transformer and also an audio boosting transformer. The windings are as such 110 volts in primary, 6 volts out for the secondary. The primary is going to go to this guy. We have a ground, of course, and a um, positive, which is this shielded wire that goes to the function switch. On a lot of these, I will often add a uh, switch to turn the radio signal off and on, but this already has that switch. It's a built-in. We don't need to worry about that. Since we're going to be running, since this is a mono unit, we can't have stereo separation. I'm going to put the right and left channels together through a pair of these resistors. These are 33 ohm resistors, and the, the two, one in, one in, two, of the, two of these ends will be stuck together, and then the other two ends will go right and left individually. What I also need to do is drill a hole through this so that I can add the um, the cable to go through here. I'm kind of looking to see, does it make more sense actually to drill the hole through here? Let's see, how does it, I can't remember how this goes in the cabinet. I need to look at the cabinet because I don't want the cable to come out in some weird, awkward way making it difficult for the user to get at, or in a, such a way where the cord could become mashed if it sat down. But anyway, we'll probably mount the uh, transformer here. You need to make sure that both the surfaces are clean and roughened up a little bit, and I'll use some super glue to attach. So let me go over and just do a little bit of hemming and hawing with configuration. And then when we drill the hole, we'll put this little rubber grommet in it so that the cord's not going to get cut by the sharp edges of the metal. All right, so I decided to run it out the back of the chassis. This is what faces the back of the uh, the cabinet. And let's go ahead and fire it up to see. Can't remember which one of these settings we're on, but we'll probably hear it soon enough. What we should be hearing is audio coming through with this Bluetooth device going through the record player connection. Comes a loud truck. All right, that seems to work pretty well. 
Well, I had to make some last minute changes. The record player does not like interacting with that transformer, but it's sufficiently loud on its own. But you see, when I incorporate the transformer, that sounds terrible. So, for audio input, we'll need to switch it that way. That's fine. All right, so now time for reassembling everything. We have the chassis, the speaker, the cabinet, the record player, and I'm going to do it all on this towel so I don't scratch anything up because it's very easy to do, especially in an old finish. Need to reattach the antenna and get this puppy back together again. All right, she's all back together again. Taking on a wishbone from the frigid air. So that is with the Bluetooth running through it. And where is the Bluetooth? So we can unplug that. And then we can start up the record player. And let me undo the needle here. And then we'll flip the little switch in the back. And proceed to play the record. Let me share my love with you. Take me back into your dreams, dear. It's good and loud. Now that record's pretty. That record's pretty wore out. Unfortunately, I got rid of most of my 78s. But then we can turn over to the radio. All of the enjoyment on at home shortly and everything that goes with it. But state wildlife officials say because of a number of reasons, including... Jay Melendez trying to get back into play, clips a leg. Doug McDaniel earns a trip to the foul line. And he knocks down the first. McDaniel now with eight points. Two assists, two rebounds. Last three games, Robbie mentioned it earlier, but McDaniel's been playing so well. 18, 16, and 20. And now he gets both free throws. But the fact that only three turnovers as well. He's taking care of the basketball. He's run the team. And Anyway, I think she'll do. Um, a lot of people don't give these types of radios the time of day. They're not worth hardly anything. But I didn't care. I, I haven't restored one of these in years. And I'm just, I've been kind of in the doldrums restoring the exact same radios lately. <laughs> mainly a lot of German sets. So I just, I needed a, a diversion and this did a nice job of giving me that diversion. So thanks so much for watching. I know this was a short episode compared to some of our more recent, but thanks for sticking around anyway. And until the next time something comes across my workbench, I'll see you guys next time. Adios.